Hey everybody, here we are in the Antietam National Cemetery, and I thought this was obscure and unknown Antietam, and yet we've done numerous videos here. In fact, I will particularly draw your attention to one of the anniversaries, anniversary videos, I think three years ago, where we were with Wayne Motts, and we were breaking out artifacts from the battle, and there was a soldier named Darling who was kind of new to the Army, and he died at Antietam, and Wayne brought out his stenciled backpack and brought it back to his headstone. Um, you know, that was probably the first time that backpack had been back to Antietam since the Civil war so it's a particularly meaningful moment and i'll encourage you to uh, come back and watch those videos or if you're ever here for the anniversary come here and you can hear the names of those who've perished here um, listed uh, by rangers and volunteers here in the cemetery it's particularly meaningful and, and i think it would be great if you did but one thing we've never really covered in all of our cemetery programs as far as i remember is something that we don't know as much about as i would like and i think i'm about to double my knowledge when dennis comes on here and that is sort of the legend and myth and truth of lee's rock was lee in this cemetery was there a rock associated with him? What happened to it? Dennis Fry, Save Historic Antietam Foundation. So Gary, I have an artifact with me and I want you to uh, help me hold on to it here for a moment. This is an original map showing the Antietam National Cemetery. Uh, it was done for the Antietam National Cemetery Board and uh, it was actually done in 1867. Um, so right after the war. And in fact, uh, the, the cemetery opened in 1867. So it is it is so current with what's happened here with the removal of the Union dead and reburial of them here in this plot. This was not a cemetery at the time of the battle. In fact, at the time of the battle, this is held by the Confederates. In fact, the Union Army never takes this position on September 17th or September 18th. So there's an interesting irony that the United States soldiers are actually buried on ground that was held by General Lee and the Army of Northern Virginia all day on the 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th before Lee finally withdrew. Very, very interesting irony. But it's high ground, it's beautiful, the mountains surround us, it's just outside of Sharpsburg, and most of you have been here. But there's something very interesting on this map, this artifact. So here's the main entrance, which you all come in right here. And here's the, the famous lodge building. Now it's changed since what you see here, but that's where the lodge building is. And then you would come back the avenue. Now, old Simon would be right here. Now he's not there on this map they planned for him, but he hasn't even been sculpted yet. That's the great big statue that stands in the middle of the National Cemetery that Gary has spoken to you about previously. But we're not going there. We're gonna come through the main entrance, back the avenue, and then come here to the right. Now to, to further understand where you are, this section right here is for New York dead. And this section here, pardon me, pardon me. This is Pennsylvania dead here and New York dead here. They're the biggest sections of the cemetery because they had the most troops, the most men mortally wounded or killed here at Antietam. So come along here, the kind of this circular path coming over here. And notice this little, this little thing right here. That's called Lee's Rock. In fact, it's even identified over here um, as General Lee's Rock. General Lee's Rock. There it is. So what in the world? Well, let's take a look. Here we are. This is General Lee's Rock. And you say, okay, Dennis, you spent too much time with Gary. There's no rock. All I see is grass. There's no boulder. There's no evidence of any rock. You, you just spent way too much time with Gary Edelman. He's addled your brains. Actually, no. This is the site of a massive boulder, a massive boulder that was here in the what would become the Antietam National Cemetery. And local tradition holds that General Lee stood upon this rock during the battle and helped give orders and commands from this position. Now there's there's opportunity to believe that because we're located in General Lee's right center. We are on high ground. We are behind Confederate lines. We especially are behind Confederate artillery positions that are pointing and firing in opposition to Union artillery off to our east. So Lee, this might be a good point for him to be, especially if the rock is somewhat elevated. So Lee's rock. Well, think of this, generally venerated 
even though the Army of Northern Virginia and the Confederacy loses the Civil War, General Lee is heroic to the point of mythical. And so this rock takes on mythical proportion. And it's gone. It's not here. What happened to it? We certainly haven't had enough geologic evolution for the weather to wear it away. So why is it no longer here? Well, the answer is around you. The answer is around you. Look at all these stones, these stones, not the stone of Lee's Rock, but these headstones of hundreds, well, thousands of Union soldiers buried here. Now, is there a problem having Lee's Rock in a national cemetery dedicated to Union soldiers? Is, is there some incongruity, perhaps, that just doesn't feel quite right about having the enemy commander here at this monument to him, a natural monument, this natural stone, iconic for General Lee, overlooking his opposition, the enemy, the army that he was trying to kill, and this is evidence of how much success he and the Confederates had in killing United States soldiers. Well, it's 1866, the war's just ended. And even in 1866, this becomes controversial. The National Cemetery has been established. We're taking dead Union soldiers off the field where they were buried in 1862 and removing their remains here and placing them in these night neat rows by state. And here's Lee's Rock. And even in 1866 and 1867, this is a tourist attraction. People are coming to stand where Robert E. Lee stood. People are actually chipping away at Lee's Rock, taking away souvenirs, taking it home with them. I have a piece of Lee's Rock at Antietam. So the Antietam National Cemetery Board has a dual problem here. It, its issue is we have Union veterans buried here, and we have Robert E. Lee memorialized here, not by human hand, but by Mother Nature, and just by the very fact that Lee himself apparently stood here during the battle. So why is it gone? Well, General Lee was too much. We can't have General Lee, at least in 1867 and 1868, the war is so close and so near, wounds are still so fresh, reconciliation is still kind of far away, we're in the midst of reconstruction, that's not a happy period in American history. And so the decision is made, not unanimously by the board, but after a lot of debate, the decision is made, obliterate Lee's Rock. We need to remove it and make it go away forever. Well, that created a lot of controversy. There were people said, no, 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 you, you, that's not right. We shouldn't obliterate history. If Lee was there and Lee used the rock, we should keep that as a future reference point and talk about General Lee at Antietam and use that particular point to indicate that Lee was actually here and to discuss what he does here. So there was a strong argument not to remove the rock, but emotions were high. Emotions were strong, emotions were powerful. And eventually in 1868, the prevailing emotion was, and the decision became, eliminate the rock, it must go. And so this early natural monument that General Lee never intended to be a monument became a point of controversy in 1866 1867, 1868. What do we do with General Lee's rock? And now you can see, but this isn't done by anybody in the 21st century. This clearance wasn't done by anybody in the 20th century. This was done by people who lived Antietam, who experienced the battle, local citizens, and by the Antietam Cemetery Board that decided it's best to have General Lee removed from the National Cemetery 
while the remains of men who fought here against him are removed to this location. Thanks, Dennis. Uh, very well put, and I think very good to put us into the mind that maybe we don't live in the only time today where things like this are controversial. Uh, we are passing through, um, you know, one particular moment in time when, in fact, as long as there's been monuments, as long as there's been markers, as long as there's been tablets, there's been controversy over them. So think about that um, and engage positively with us on the subject if you'd like to. Um, and thank you so much for watching and, of course, for supporting Battlefield Preservation and Education.